Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gamer Tidicom video. As some of you might know, AMD are indeed working on their new CPU cores. They are known as Zen. And the good news is, from what we can tell so far, they're looking pretty promising. So just to get you up to speed, Zen, of course, is going to be replacing the previous desktop-based CPUs known as Bulldozer. Now, we don't exactly know when they're going to be released, but from what we can tell, it's going to be in 2016. From what we can also assume, um, based on the slides and other murmurs in the industry, they're going to be running on a 95 watt TDP, and they're going to be debuting inside desktop CPU line known as Summit Ridge family of products. So according to sources, Summit Ridge is going to debut on another FM3 socket, and it's going to fully support DDR4 and also built on 14nm. Now, the cool thing, of course, about DDR4 is we're really at the limit of what DDR3 can do in terms of memory bandwidth. This is particularly true of APUs, which, of course, have a better performing GPU built right in. But even CPUs, particularly for gamers with, let's just say, DirectX 12, which is going to utilize uh, multi-threading much better, as well as other applications, DDR3 is... It's doing the job, but it won't do for much longer. <clears throat> Intel are already setting sail towards the DDR4 island, and AMD are also about to set off on its cruise as well, which is good in my personal opinion anyway. So, there has been a patch which AMD have released for Linux. Now, this Linux patch is going to remove support from spe four specific instructions which are introduced with Bulldozer, but also introduce a slew of new ones. Now... The instructions which are removed include TBM, FMA4, XOPT, and LWP. Now, the the reason behind removing them rather than just leaving them on chip is because it actually takes up CPU space. So, in other words, why have these instructions which not enough people are utilizing? Instead, get rid of them and put in something that's going to actually benefit. <clears throat> For example, AMD are finally going to be uh, supporting RDC'd, which Intel have actually put in since Broadwell, and they're also going to be adding in SMAP as well, which is uh, short for Supervisor Mode Access Prevention, which is yet another instruction which Intel added in, um, and it's completely supported by Linux, and this is according to Michael Larabel from Fire Linux. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Anyway, AMD are also going to add in CL0, which uh, this one, the CL0 instruction zeroes out the 64-byte cache line specific uh, specified in racks, which bits 5.0 of racks are ignored. And uh, there's also a few other bits and bobs. Unfortunately, not all of these are explained. So, for example, you've got X saves, you've got CL flush uh, opt, you've got ADCX, uh, SHA, and X save C. And X saves with an S. Um, a couple of these have not really been uh, fully explained. And they are not um, part of, let's say, Skylake even. So they are specific and new and shiny for Zen microarchitecture. The only problem is how well they're going to be supported. Hopefully pretty damn well, uh, if I'm totally honest with you. But it's, it's looking quite cool for the CPU lineup. And I'm really hoping that they're super competitive. Um, I don't necessarily know if they're going to beat Intel, but hopefully they do, because it would give a nice punt to Intel, which would obviously kick a nice CPU bore out, and you might say, well, hey, AMD are never quite as fast as Intel. That's actually not quite true. In the Athlon lineup, particularly in the early days, they were very competitive with Intel, and actually slightly faster, and hell, even Athlon 64, they were actually quite considerably ahead, so... Intel really started to beat AMD when it came to the core to core, uh, core to duo slash core to quad, and of course that extended to the 920s and all of the other processors which have popped up since. But with any luck, these processors are going to be very efficient in terms of power utilization and actually going to deliver a pretty good IPC as well. Obviously, that's very important. You can have a 10,000 megahertz processor, but if it's only doing a half the amount of instructions of another processor uh, based on the same core, then uh, sorry, the same clock, then that's not really that helpful. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a shorty. Uh, hopefully, we'll know more over the next couple of. Uh, 
well, a couple of months. We do know that this processor is being developed in tandem with a sister core. AMD are definitely getting into ARM as well, and they're developing a 64-bit ARM V8 based on a K12 architecture. But once again, AMD are being pretty shtim about this, which you can kind of expect, because obviously they don't want to be giving away the game before the processors are actually released. But it would appear that they're going to be pretty fast. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.